video though. Good, because when we're in Wilmington, we're going to eat it. <laughs> to be yeah, like, can you believe we even contemplated leaving early? <laughs> Well, this is turning out to be one of my least favorite passages of all time. Uh, the currents have been just wicked and crazy. The wind's really fickle, just unbelievably uncomfortable. 100 miles to go. Megan, what are we going to do about this situation? We have got a serious problem. Uh, what is the problem? The problem is that how are we going to leave here? The problem is we don't have to leave. I mean, the solution is we don't have to leave. There's nowhere to go. Estados Needles. I think we just have to enjoy it. Okay. When should I call for uh, help? 11.30. Hi! You don't look too happy about being left. Going to Grand Key to dose up on some groceries because we still don't have a good weather window back up to the States. Plus, it's a little hard to leave this spot. It's gorgeous and we've had it mostly to ourselves a lot. channel again. A lot of current through here. It's pretty rough. You would not want to lose an engine or anything. You'd be uh, off in the Atlantic before you know it. And that grocery store was kind of hilarious. Typical of the Out Island grocery stores. They do not have much. Got some canned goods and their last 18 eggs. So uh, lucky to get the eggs. Anyway, I better navigate here. Luckily, you got rid of that garbage. I know, free. Nice. A one-armed guy came and took it. Aww. Yeah. Good job. I did make a judgment call. Hopefully you're okay with it. I did not buy the cake mix and frosting. <laughs> Good. Oh, the weather is changing. Look at this. We got bona fide thunderstorms time for us to get out well the window is here so I think we're just gonna seize it uh, we're thinking about leaving tomorrow or even Wednesday I think we're gonna try and outrun the next front that'll arrive up in the uh, Wilmington area eh, Thursday or Friday so we are gonna motor out tonight probably a good deal motoring here the first 24 hours don't really like to do that but uh, we're gonna try and make some tracks. Stay away from the convection as best we can. So heading out soon. How's she doing? I don't know. None of us are used to it, buddy. I know. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Day number one. Very very short. We left just before sunset, <laughs> and uh, skies are mostly clear. Just some high-level clouds. Really pretty out. Winds are from right behind us at about the same speed we're traveling, about five knots. So we are motoring. And so ends night one. I'll start getting light here about 5.15, so pretty short night. We were under main and jib through most of the night and then the wind just completely fizzled out. It's just glassy. It's hardly a whisper of wind. Kind of in a transition zone, I think. We've got some convection behind us. I think that's a stalled out front or a stalled trough. We'll leave that behind and hopefully the models are consistent with 
developing an east or east to northeast breeze later on today so that we can get some sailing in because we don't like motoring all that much. Pretty sun coming up. A few little showers popping up on the radar. Uh, we'll take a look at those in person. One uh, fairly general way that you can judge whether a shower or a thunder shower is building is uh, how pointy it is on top. The pointier it is, the less it is building. Uh, showers that are wider and have a base that extends kind of vertically, more like a column, those are typically going to be your stronger showers, your stronger cells. So one of the things we're going to be looking for today is a east wind to build in. Uh, it should be relatively light, but when I see a line of very light cloud like this, only up about a thousand feet, I think that could be my wind line. We'll see. Well, as expected, the winds bent around to the east and they are increasing. And we have a puppy dog here who wants some love. And we're doing uh, between six and seven knots. Pretty close to the wind. And we are heading closer to Gulf Stream, so we'll get a little kick in the pants from that too. It's kind of interesting. I think we've got a counter current. Yeah kind of a decision time here. Do we go towards the west and get into the Gulf Stream and get that tailwind, which will take us further out of our way, or do we take a more direct route, save the distance, but then also go slower? So kind of a decision to be made. Oh look, it's our favorite stuff. Sargasso. Weeds. What's the problem with it? Well, they've been getting in our prop. So we had to get out the handy uh, GoPro and see if there was some strung up on there instead of diving in. That's a big old patch. Stuff is everywhere. It was bouncy for a while, but I say overall pretty comfortable. We're doing right now between uh, six and a half, seven knots. So really, not the fastest passage ever, but I guess the trade-off is that the sea state is relatively comfortable, which is nice, because it's been a while since we've been bouncing around here, bouncing around out here in the, uh, in the open ocean, so that it's not particularly wild, it's a good thing. So, getting ready for night number two, and Sugar's doing really good. She's going up to the bathroom when she needs to, got a great appetite, Getting her sea legs. I feel like she's acclimated really well. So after getting caught in a pretty wicked countercurrent last night, we did a sharp uh, turn back in towards the Gulf Stream, and it was really, really bouncy. Still very, very bouncy out here. Really, actually. The sea state is just terrible. 10 knots. A little speed over ground thing. That SOG. That's what it's all about, baby. 10 knots over the ground and here in the Gulf Stream. The only thing we could really hope for here would be the perfect wind. Because right now it is too rolly to put the sails up with the winds as light as they are. The, they just lap back and forth and probably break some shackles and stuff. Kind of lucky. This is the shackle that goes to the uh, purchase system on the main halyard. It unscrewed itself with all the shaking around here, but this is how I found it. Oh my god. Swinging around up there on the mast. So it looks like we've left the Gulf Stream. It's kind of a mixed blessing. On the one hand, you really like to have that kick in the pants from behind. Four or five extra knots of speed is, it's a game changer. But the sea state, just 
ridiculous. Where the models were forecasting 1.3 to 1.4 meters. So, you know, four to five feet. We saw sets come through that were, no exaggeration, 12 and 14 feet. Now they weren't continuous, but we'd see a set of four or five waves, one after another at about five second intervals. So the boat was just up and down. The good, so, the good news though was that on the flip side, we were flying. We were doing 12, 12 and a half knots over the ground. So anyway, leaving the Gulf Stream, we've turned onto our final course and we are motor sailing. Uh, we would be sailing, sailing, but we've got a deadline. You've got to hit the entrance of Cape Fear Inlet on an ingoing tide, especially with a southwest wind and swell like we've got. So we've got to get there tomorrow at about four to five o'clock. Oh my God, they're spotted. Oh my God, I've never seen spotted. Hey guys. night on our passage back to the United States. I'm a little bored but something just happened and it made me think let's talk AIS. AIS is the automatic identification system and all commercial boats on the open seas have to have a transponder that sends out a, a string of information about location, course, speed, all that for collision avoidance. Pleasure crafts are not required to have one, but I'm telling you, it's the best money you can spend for peace of mind if you are out at night or in inclement weather, AIS. So it got me thinking because of this guy right here. MSC Soraya. Uh, when I see a target like this, that's potentially gonna cause a conflict, I go check out his data and I can see all sorts of interesting things about his boat. I can see his size, he's 909 feet long, 131 feet wide, 38 foot draft, I mean a really big ship. His uh, SOG, his speed over the ground, 16.5 knots. So this guy was heading right for us. We were under sail, so theoretically we have right away and he was not responding to the radio calls. I'll tell you, that gets stressful in a hurry when he's making, you know, 16, 17 knots. The closure rate is really, really fast. So I can't really plot his data because he's heading away from me, but I'm gonna use somebody else who's showing up on the screen here. Let's click on this target right here. The Maersk Chicago. So I click on that, I get a range information, 13.5 nautical miles and a bearing of uh, 0 0.55. But I've got options I can click on. And I can show you the full AIS data like I did before, or I can just get a box that shows me some basic details. Let's zoom in, shall we? And a little pink, that is him showing up as a radar reflection. The Mayor Chicago is going 19.6 knots. His course over ground is 255 magnetic. Look at the two numbers underneath that. We've got 2.45 nautical miles NM and 30 M 13 seconds. That's 30 minutes, 50 seconds. There you go. It's updating all the time, so I'll have trouble keeping up. That is our CPA, or the closest that that vessel is going to get to us and the time at which it's going to get as close as it will get, if his course doesn't change and my course doesn't change. So not only does this allow me to make decisions about which way I might want to go to avoid him 
although two and a third miles is plenty of space for both of us to maneuver. But also, uh, this system is rigged up to set off alarms. So audible alarms will uh, go off here in the cockpit. So AIS is pretty handy for peace of mind at night. Uh, in fact, if I had a choice between radar and AIS, I would take the AIS every single time. So we'll just track the Mayor Chicago for a little while and if it looks like he's gonna get a little too close, we'll give him a shout on the radio and uh, make sure he knows what we're up to and we'll get a better idea of what he's up to. So it's day three. We made it through three nights and so excited to be dropping anchor this evening. Um, Nick took most of the watches, so I got a lot of good solid sleep, lots of dreams, and he's now crashed out. And I'm just watching this one ship that looks like we're gonna be a mile and a half apart, and watching the sunrise. So, ooh, it's good to get this, this trip in the books. Looking forward to it. Uh, checking out Wilmington. What is it, Nick? Oh, it's got to be Dorado, right? Yeah. Mahi Mahi. Remember this guy? Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, wow. Thank you, Fishy. There's nothing on the radar in terms of uh, thunder shower or anything like that. Not exactly sure what this thing is, but uh, yeah, the winds really increase quickly, and uh, oh, looks like a looks like a storm sort of. I was born ready. That doesn't do justice to how ready I am. Uh, 400 miles ready. It is interesting. It's always this exact same way at the end. It could be an 80 mile trip, a 700 mile trip. The last like five miles. Ooh. It's like, have you ever had a dream where you're running from somebody or something? And you're just like, you're running as fast as you can, but you're like stuck to the ground. Have you ever had that dream? Yeah. So we're headed up the Cape Fear River, which is a pretty wide river, well marked, good buoys. But already I'm coming to understand why people gripe so much about using the ICW, the Intercoastal Waterway. Uh, we, we look at those guys and go, gosh, you don't have to wait for good weather, you can just go up and down this little channel. But the issue is, you're in a channel, and so you gotta pay attention to the buoys and the deep water because if you stray very far, you're gonna be hard of ground and going nowhere. So it's not as relaxing as being out on the open ocean where oh, you change your course a few degrees here or there, doesn't matter. Here you gotta watch. I can't imagine being on the ICW for whatever it is, 1200 miles, 700 miles, the way a lot of folks go up and down the east coast of the US. I couldn't do it. For a northbound transit next available. Yeah, well, what do you need for a clearance, Captain? We are 73 plus the antenna, so I say a solid 75. 
Okay, I see you. I'm going to wait till you get a little bit closer, and then I'll open for you. Okay, we'll be awaiting your signal for northbound transit, standing by 1A. Well, that's all she wrote. That's it for this season. Ah, uh, the sounds of <laughs> nature. Wouldn't you know there is a apartment building going up right next to the marina? <laughs> it's maybe 40 feet from us. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, is kind of a funny theme for us, so <laughs> we're laughing. But that'll keep us on the move. Yep, yep. We, uh, we don't like to stay in one place for very long. So while the boat's going to be here through the summer, we probably won't be. Yeah. So hope you stick around and follow our, our land adventures. Mm -hmm. We're going to head off and get up into the mountains, so maybe share a bit of that. And uh, I think we got some boat-related, cruising-related stuff, too. A uh, few ideas kicking around in the old noggin. You got any off the top of your head? Um, I think it'd be fun to show them where we started 19 years ago. Yeah, yeah. A little backstory yeah. for us. Uh, I want to talk a bit more about weather as it relates to uh, sailing and cruising. Maybe do a video about lightning. We know a lot of folks have been struck by lightning. There's some things you can do to uh, prevent that, perhaps. It's a good one. Um, pink and blue jobs. <laughs> That's an interesting topic. Something that I've written a bit about in, uh, in one of my books. Oh yeah, and we actually want to do more about the getter on board, maybe kind of do a few chapters at a time, talk it through. Yeah, somehow I was able to get you on board here three yeah, or four times. Yeah. yeah. This summer I want to see if I can get her flying with me. Uh-huh. He's going to need to write a new book on that one, folks. Get her on. Get her in the air. Get her in the air. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, right. You know, I'm afraid of heights too, by the way. I know. And um, you also admitted you don't like bouncing around in small airplanes. Well, the so trick is not bouncing around. At least you can understand where I'm coming from. So I guess the voyaging is over for maybe four or five months. I know it's kind of weird when sailing channels um, take a break for the hurricane season, seem to go on hiatus. Um, we're not going to disappear, though. We're really having a lot of fun with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't believe how many people are subscribing. I just want to say thank you for all of that. Um, Thanks for all the great comments too. It's really fun. To it's interact super with cool. You. Yeah, super cool. It's not a one-way thing. It's a two-way deal. Yeah. And uh, I just became aware of this. It's uh, a big deal. If you want to hear from us and make sure you know when we've got a new video out, you don't just subscribe, but you have to click on the little. Did you know about this? Yeah, click the on the little, little bell. The bell yeah. button. So if you click on the bell button, then when we put out a new video, you get another reminder uh what else can we talk about to wrap things up uh we've got our super secret podcast that comes out every week we're going to try and keep that up uh, that's been a lot of fun too it's more behind the scenes talking about uh what we're doing on day to day it could be boring for some but could be interesting uh for others and uh then another shout out or another uh, uh one more reminder about uh, our deal with audible if you click on one of the links down in the description and you sign up for an audible uh, product or program um, i've narrated several audible books uh, you can check out some of my work there and if you sign up uh, we get a little bounty as it's known uh, i think it's, it's either i think it's 75 bucks yeah, if they, if they stick around for a couple months. If you stick around for a and couple months. And also, I put it on our website, sailclarity.com, under That's right. products. So. That's right. Uh, some of you have been asking about which camera gear we use and products that, we're, that we like, and uh, that's all going on. This, yeah, I'm going to add that today. Yeah, sailclarity.com. Uh, we're going to try and make that kind of a central hub. So if you want to reach out to us, email us. If you have a comment or question that you don't want to post in one of the public forums, go ahead and send it in there. We've been talking a lot uh, privately, one-on-one -on -one with folks who are interested in doing this themselves. We've been talking about boats, what kind of boats, different brands, different sizes. And that's been fun and interesting because while we're not experts, we do have some experience here. So, um, so it's fun sharing yeah. that. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Well, anyway, till next time, I'm not even quite sure what we're going to do next week, but next week we'll have a video for you. Uh, I think I'm going to talk maybe about boat buying because I have a sense or a feeling after buying and selling uh, four boats that inexperienced buyers 
end up paying too much for boats and inexperienced sellers end up selling for too little. So I think that's what I'm gonna work on next time are some tips and hints on uh, not just shopping, but really negotiating the right deal. Um, so maybe we'll save you some coin if you tune in for that. Cool. Yeah, well, it's been a you. lot of fun. Yeah, we've had a great season with you, and this YouTube experience has just been fantastic for us. So we really appreciate your viewership and taking us along wherever it is that you're out cruising yourself.